All right, so I contacted a company called Anycubic, and if you don't know who that is, they make 3D printers. And they make cheaper or less expensive resin 3D printers, which are awesome for jewelry making, actually, because you can make something and print it out and then cast it. And so that takes the whole molding uh, wax and stuff out of the equation so you can do it on the computer. So inside the actual box itself is instructions. So if you don't already know, resin 3D printers work based on a UV resin and it just uses a light and basically a phone screen to lock into certain areas and then harden in the other areas that are exposed and it keeps doing that over and over again layer by layer and it makes whatever you hold it to print. So we have a USB dry or thumbstick, power supply, and it's a US one, which is nice. Little scraper, an Allen key. Uh, thing I put to the side is a bunch of different. Um, little pieces that I'll go over later. So this is the top cover. And you'll notice that it's a weird orange color. It's so it blocks out um, UV light because if you have UV light coming in, you'll cure yourself and then they won't work properly. So this is the resin bed or reservoir. So you can see it has little markers in it for how much is in here, which is a very nice um, thing to add. I believe the other one didn't have that. I could be wrong though. I have a friend that has the um, other version of this. And this is its little build area. So this is very small. Like, basically, this is your build area. And if you know anything about 3D printers, usually their build areas are probably about that big for the small ones. And then I'll put a picture up now of the giant one I just had to build. It's actually 600 by 600 by 600 millimeters. So there was a second box that came with it. This should be resin. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Just uh, 500 milliliters of resin. All right, so let's go over what's inside this little bag. There's a after sale service card, which I'll have to look into. It has some links on the back. These are some strainer filters for the resin. So if there's any hard um, pieces in it, you just make, make so you can strain them out. It's a QC pass card saying that it is good to go. And hopefully hit made it here all good to go. Some Allen keys. And it looks like a face mask and gloves. So it also came with an assembly and an instruction manual that will basically show me exactly how to set this thing up and get it running. All right, so I have it all plugged in. I'm gonna get it turned on. There's actually a power switch on the side over here. And I wanna make sure it's all going to boot up. And yeah, look at that. And this is a little touch screen. Really responsive. Like I'm barely touching it. So looking at it, this is obviously straight on. So if we turn it to its side, it has its power switch and it has its USB um, right here. And it's using USB instead of an SD card, which is a plus in my book because I don't like using like the micro SD cards. On the back, there's not really much going on. It looks like it has one 3D printed part back here. And other than that, this whole thing is just a metal casing. Okay, so as you can see, the original Photon is quite a bit bigger than the new Zero version. And it looks quite a bit different. 
And for a good reason, this is about $260 right now on Amazon. And this is going to be only $169. And that's the starting price. This started out at like, what, 400? So yeah, big difference in price. But it also comes with a difference in build volumes. So on our new one, it actually has fill lines in it. So you can see how much you can fill this before it overflows. And the original one, it doesn't have any lines and it's actually really easy to overflow this. And then you get resin everywhere, which you don't really want. And it can ruin your machine. So you can see all the different lines here and it even tells you what milliliter that would be. So that's handy compared to this one having nothing on it. Even though this one is made out of solid aluminum and this one's plastic. So this is the size difference you're gonna be looking at for these. So it's pretty small in comparison, but if you're going to be making small parts, like rings and stuff like that, this won't really matter. So let's compare some prints. So here's the two test cubes from both machines. And the first thing you might notice is they're two different sizes because the original test cube size is, well, this one for the um, photon. And for the zero, it's just downscaled a bit because it won't fit because this is actually too big for the print area. So the millimeter markings down here for the 35 millimeter are wrong. And this is very thin, but it still represents what it can do. Also, just take note that I broke that little piece right here by accidentally putting my hand on top of this. So that's not the actual printer that failed, it's just me breaking it. So this is the one from the Zero. And if you look at it, it's very nicely squared on all the edges, no weird waviness to it. All the text is completely readable. There are lines in this a little bit, but nothing terrible. So even down here where the text is, it's very clear and very nice. And all of the stuff you see here is from the bed being machined and just leaving its machining marks. And this is from the other photon. And everything is the proper size, so we're not gonna have weird warping going on here because it's not too thin and it looks just about the same. This one actually got a little bit of wiggly lines on it, surprisingly. Right here. I don't know if it's because of settings or not, but I pretty much set them to the same settings. So here's a head-to-head -head comparison of the two. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. So this is the zero, and this is the normal photon. So there's not really that big of a difference whatsoever between the two. And this one technically printed better. And that's really not that bad considering the price point of this one and the fact that its screen resolution is way less than the normal photon. So here's something that's a little more in my alley of things, which are rings. And this one completely failed because of the supports I put into it because I am very new to resin printing and this is 100% my fault. But it only had a couple supports. So from learning from that, I was able to make this one. I still messed up a little bit for one of the supports on the bands. So it's a little bit goopy right about here. But other than that, it came out really nice, and this is a very thin wall on here. And it also fits perfectly. You can see some lines in here. So I did the same exact one on the pho normal photon. And here's its results. And you can't really see any weird lines besides maybe right there. But for what I'm working with, either one of these will work perfectly. This one also fits my finger 
exactly how it should for its size. So both machines did it incredibly well. I don't have the other one here now, but this one did way better than I thought it would. And I'm completely happy with it so far. I still have a lot more testing to do and you'll see future videos with all that. But the only problem I found with it really is it can only use the software from Anycubic. And I can't get the other software to make any files that will work on it. And on the other one, you can use either or and it doesn't care. So that's kind of limiting, but there might be a way around that from what I've seen online that I just need to look into more. Um, one thing this has on the normal Photon is when it's running with this over the top, you cannot smell the resin whatsoever. As soon as I take this off, I could smell it. The normal Photon has a little fan inside of it and it's literally, as soon as you turn it on with nothing in it, it just smells like resin in the entire room. I can be in the room with this and have no problems. And there is no active filter going on with this one at all. So that's a major plus for me. All right, so that's about it. Um, I just wanted to let you know that this was sent to me free of charge from Anycubic. So they didn't pay me anything to say anything nice about it, but they did supply me with the printer itself and basically said, give us your thoughts. So here they are. I plan on using it a bunch in the future. So subscribe for more content about this and how I plan on actually using it. If you want to pick one of these up, you're going to have to wait until March, but they're going to be $169.99. So $170 basically. Or you could pick up the other Photon right now on Amazon for about $260. And I'll have links in the description to this stuff and some other helpful things that will go along with this. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.